talking about uh, how to approach the uh, Charlestown breachway, and in general, almost any breachway um, this applies. What you have to look for is uh, what kind of sea conditions you have, um, whether you have swells or chop. Um, what we're looking for is a pattern that sets up so that you can uh, approach the breachway and follow uh, a wave in. Um, it's best sometimes to approach it on an incoming tide. You also want to approach it from a distance so you can clearly see up the uh, channel or up the gut between the two walls. And that will let you uh, allow any traffic that's outbound to clear before you enter. You want to be at least a quarter mile out before you make your approach in and you want to make it straight on because there's rocks on either side of the of what you see of the two walls and the east and west wall there are rocks that extend out on both sides it's table rock which is sits about two feet below the surface that's, that you don't see and that many people have hit uh, when they've taken a shortcut coming in into the breachway so what we're looking at right now out here you can see there's a set of pattern of uh, swells that are running in um, fortunately, we've got uh, an incoming tide at the breachway, which makes the swells just lay right down in the, into the uh, breach itself. You want to be on the back side of a swell and, and almost surf it in. Um, what you don't really want to happen is uh, get on the downside of a swell and have the, the wave push you. Um, and, uh, you can end up hitting the rocks uh, if, you, if you bow steer. So, um, off to the right here, you can see the waves breaking on the on the uh, end of the wall. Um, this is about a medium condition. Uh, I've seen it a lot worse, and at times it's uh, a cakewalk. Again, waves come in patterns, and a lot of times you. Um, you get it easy. That was that was pretty easy. You can see it's laid pretty flat right now. But if you wait another few minutes, uh, you'll get a set of rollers come in that could make it a little bit more difficult. So. All right. So we successfully entered the uh, breachway, and now we're approaching uh, the channel that leads into the salt pond. Uh, to the to the um, east of us is the uh, Charlestown. Uh, Breachway Park, which is a RV park campsite. Um, as we approach that, we want to be on the east side or on the right side. Uh, we're, we're just passing the launch ramp, and uh, what you're going to look for is uh, we just passed the green marker behind me, um, and that just gets everybody over onto the east east side going out, um, coming in. Um, out in the center here. It's pretty shallow, so you're going to run aground. Right now, we've got a very good high tide, so um, we're enjoying that along the side. What you don't want to do is get too far close to the bank because that is rocky over there. So if you're going to air, you're probably better to air to the um, to the west side, which is sandier. All you're going to do is polish your prop up a little bit. Um, so as we come up to the end of the uh, what we call the basin area, um, you'll see a red stick. Um, which just like your traditional um, navigation red right return so as I approach that um, I'm seeing another uh, traffic coming down downstream and don't forget if um, uh, the guy that is going with the tide should have the right away because he has the least amount of uh, steerage as we make our first big turn um, you've got to make it wide there is a green stick out on the uh, far bank. Now the next major uh, area of concern is as we uh, leave the, the channel area and end up in starting into the pond, there's a section where there's an old barge. Uh, this is a, a coal barge that must have come in through a storm and really don't have a date on it, but the type of construction it's probably anywhere from 100 50 to 100 years old. Um, so a section of the barge is right in the middle. Uh, we've got these stakes as we approach uh, outlining a channel in between the land and the barge. It's also a very popular um, fishing spot so there's always people on this corner uh, anchored up fishing. You can see this channel as we as we go into the pond now. 
it's very important that you stay within the channel. If you look off to the left, there's birds, they're standing. So you can see how shallow it is, just a matter of uh, 20 yards away. So what we're doing now is we're essentially circumnavigating around uh, the big sand delta that's off behind my uh, shoulder here. Um, so as we approach uh, where the tide wants to run, it, it has a natural channel and the harbor masters come out here and marked off uh, with stakes uh, this small channel. And at this point you should trim your engine up because we're going to be probably going through less than two feet of water in some sections. So as we approach uh, into the pond, we're going to hit a section that was uh, dredged for eelgrass restoration. So we're going to get back into about three, four feet of water. Um, but it's very thick with eelgrass. The only concern there is that uh, you don't plug up your intake and overheat your engine. So you just want to be mindful of uh, the water circulating through your engine that you get good flow. All right, we've just come through this set of poles and we're into the pond now. As we work our way in, it's still quite shallow here, maybe two, three feet. But up ahead, what you want to look for on this uh, north shore is a white stick that's pointing out um, a rock. And uh, some people have gotten on the wrong side of that stick. There's the stick is right off here off my uh, starboard bow. Uh, finally, you'll see a green floating buoy right about here at the end of the old channel. Once you're into here, you can bring the boat back up on the plane and run due west. Once you're out about the center, then you can run straight north. There are a couple islands that you have to be cautious of. Two over here, and then this one on the um, west side. But you come right up straight through, right to the marina.